When I was at university, my professor wanted me to write a white paper about the application of an algorithm that belongs to the area of artificial intelligence. And at the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical. I mean, how to find a feasible use case? Can I handle the complexity? Will I still be able to hang out with my friends? A lot of important questions to clarify before I started. But then I thought, challenge accepted, let's do it. I was motivated. I mean, I was really motivated. I went home, I opened up my laptop, and the first question I had to look at was, what the hell is artificial intelligence, right? And now imagine, you are a student. You are lazy as hell. There's only one way how to approach this. And this is, you open up a search engine like Google, and you type in, dear Google, please show me what is AI. And the result I was presented looked like this. So the first sentence of my white paper was, artificial intelligence is blue. What I also learned is that AI has something to do with digital brains and robots that look like humans. I mean, in the end of the day, I did not learn anything at all by looking at these results, right? And exactly this is the problem. Because to most people in society, AI is just blue. And let me illustrate this problem with a comparison to online banking. I think most of you guys use online banking. And I think most of you have a rough idea how a bank actually works. Like you've got a bank account, you deposit money, the bank rents the money to other people, you get paid interest rates. On the other hand, millions of people are using digital services of Google, Amazon, Facebook, whatever, without being aware of their value of the personal data and the power of artificial intelligence. And this is the problem. And the only way I see to escape this problem is learning. And the good news is there are many great ways how to learn nowadays. For example, you can watch all those really, really fantastic TED Talks about AI, which you can find on YouTube. However, in order to understand what the speakers are talking about, you need to have a certain understanding about this topic and you need to be able to ask the right questions. And exactly this is what I want to deliver you today. So in my TED talk, you will receive two learnings. Number one, you will get a basic understanding of modern artificial intelligence. And number two, you will be equipped with a simple toolkit consisting out of three guiding questions that you can apply to each and every AI talk you're going to listen to. And now let's get started. And the first thing we have to clarify is the terminology, because I very often observe that people mix up the terms and this leads to confusion. So the main concept we talk about today is artificial intelligence. And this is a very broad concept. So the official definition of AI is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. However, where does intelligence start? Where does it end? All this is really up to your interpretation, and this leads to the fact that different people can have a different perspective on the same topic of AI. For example, if you talk to a computer scientist or to a psychologist, those guys can have a completely different understanding of AI, and this is absolutely okay because it is a broad topic. However, what most people mean when they talk about AI today is machine learning. And machine learning is about the imitation of the cognitive ability to learn. So what you do, you apply mathematics and statistics to historic data with the goal to identify pattern in this data in order to understand more recent data or to create predictions. And in other words, this means machine learning is the perfect tool to support rational decision-making in an uncertain environment because it's completely based on math and data. And when I talk about AI today, I refer to machine learning-based artificial intelligence. And deep learning, again, is one subset of machine learning and it does pretty much the same. So again, we look at historic data, uh, apply math and statistics to find pattern in order to create predictions. However, the difference is the type of algorithm that is applied. So whereas in classical machine learning, we apply pretty straightforward statistical mathematical math methods. Whereas in deep learning, you apply something called deep neural networks. And this is a very sophisticated type of algorithm that is 
certainly inspired by the human brain, but it does also certainly not work the same way than a human brain works. So after being familiar with the definition, you want to know what can I do with artificial intelligence? And again, here are different ways how to look at this topic, but I prefer those four application clusters. And let me start with computer vision. So computer vision is about recognizing and interpreting the content of images. And an image is nothing else than a piece of unstructured data, right? Because we can break down an image into single pixels and express each pixel with the value. And when we've got the numbers, we can apply the math. And computer vision, for example, is one of the core technologies of autonomous driving, because together with other sensors, it helps the car to perceive its environment. For example, to identify other cars, pedestrians, traffic signs, whatever, in the field of vision in order to derive the most suitable follow-up action in the current situation. What you can also do with computer vision is to distinguish a chihuahua from a muffin. And if you think this is an easy task, just have a look at this picture. So the one thing is the thing you want to abide in. The other one is the thing that might want to abide you. This is a small but very important difference, right? And as you can see, not every problem that sounds easy is actually easy for AI to solve in the end of the day. And now let me continue with natural language processing. So human natural language is very complex for machines to understand. It has got a broad terminology. It has got many rules. It has got exceptions. It's context-based. And I did not even start to talk about accents and dialects, right? And natural language processing is about the understanding, interpretation, and even generation of human natural language. For example, think about all those automatic translation services where you can translate a text from one language to another language. Or think about those smart voice assistants like Alexa or Siri. And as long as a huge metal fan can either keep me cool during a hot day or keep me awake during a quiet night, language will remain a complex thing for machines to understand. So now let's have a look at data mining. Data mining is about leveraging the potential of structured and semi-structured data that you have captured. Just think about a time series analysis where you have got cost or sales figures from the past and you want to analyze how they will continue. Or think about an automatic proper customer analysis where you try to provide the right customer with the right information in the right point in time. And this is heavily applied in social media and is called micro-targeting. What you can also do, and we are all familiar with this, are recommendation engines. I mean, think about Amazon or Netflix, right? So people who look at this product were usually also interested in these products. And I'll just imagine, I want to give an example. You visit an e-commerce store and you search, let's say, a baseball bat, you know, to hit some balls together with your friends. And now imagine you are recommended to buy these items based on popular customer combinations. Again, I have got two learnings for you. Number one, some people might have interesting hobbies. Number two, AI does not always generate the results that you have expected. And now let me finish with behavioral AI. And behavioral AI is about the ability of autonomous systems to learn a successful strategy by trial and error. Just think about a smart um, agent in a computer game. This agent has to learn how to win the game by exploring different strategies. And one very impressive example was presented by, Google, by a Google company a couple of years ago. So AlphaGo Zero is a computer program that learned how to play the board game Go. And Go is a very famous board game in Asia. It's played with a 19 by 19 grid board. And what's so special about this game is the complexity. Because the amount of possible constellations on this board surpasses the amount of atoms in the universe. This is a really huge number. 
And this algorithm learned how to play the game, basically by getting provided with the rules and by playing against itself. So exploring the right strategy. And at the end of the day, it was even able to beat the South Korean Grandmaster in an official match. But behavioral AI is also applied in robotics, for example, to teach robots the desired behavior. I mean, just think about um, assembly lines where you want robots to assemble certain production items in the right way. So now you know the definition of AI and you know what you can do with AI. The last missing piece is how to create AI. And let me start with the training because this is the biggest difference to classical computing because AI is not programmed but trained. And for AI training, we need three ingredients, data, the algorithm, and computing power. And let me first quickly start with the algorithm because most people think the algorithm is the most important asset in the game, you know, this musical Facebook algorithm that controls our lives. However, an algorithm is nothing else than a simple cooking recipe that tells us how to process data to solve a certain mathematical problem. So it's the math, it's there since the 1950s. I can read it in papers and books, I can even download it from the internet. So yes, the algorithm is important, but it's not the most important asset. What we also need is computing power. And looking back, we observe a strong increase of inexpensive computing resources, and this was certainly an accelerator. However, the most important part in the game is the data. Because what you have learned already is machine learning is based on historic data. If we do not have this data, we cannot do machine learning, right? But in times of Internet of Things, social media, online shopping, and so on, we produce tons and tons of data every day. And the more data you have, the more fun you will have with machine learning. And when all three elements come together, the data, the algorithm, plus the computing, an iterative training process starts. For example, I provide the algorithm with thousands of examples how chihuahuas look like on images. And after the training time, what we get is a trained machine learning model. And this model is basically a mathematical representation of the real world. So it contains, for example, all the rules how to identify a chihuahua on an image. The good thing is this model can be so complex, especially in deep learning, I would never ever be able to come up with a model of this complexity in a reasonable amount of time when I do it manually. However, the downside, because of this complexity, I might not be able to understand how the model works and how it will behave in different situations. So after the training, we come to the inference phase. And in the inference phase, we need new data points. So new images of chihuahuas the algorithm has never seen before. Again, we apply computing power, but here not as much as during training. I mean, your iPhone is doing machine learning every day, so that's very often sufficient. And we apply now the trained model from the training phase to the new data points, and what we get is a prediction. And this prediction could be, I identify a chihuahua on this image, and I'm confident to 97%. So this tells us that machine learning is a probabilistic approach rather than a deterministic approach. And this implies we always have a certain amount of uncertainty. And depending on the use case, we have to think about how much uncertainty we can accept. So congratulations now, you are familiar with the basics of modern artificial intelligence. And now I think you guys are excited about uh, the toolkit, the three questions. So. Let's have a look at the first one. And the first question you should ask yourself when you watch an AI talk is, is the speaker talking about artificial narrow intelligence or something superior like artificial general intelligence? And let me quickly tell you uh, what's the difference. So narrow AI is all the stuff we have talked about today. It's a very specialized type of AI that performs well in a certain niche. Whereas the other types like general AI or super AI, those types of AI come close to human level of intelligence or even surpass human level of intelligence. Um, for example, just think about this uh, smart 
small robots in the Star Wars movie called R2, D2. And just think about this guy had to save a Jedi's life. But the only thing it can do is to distinguish a chihuahua and a muffin. I mean, this does not really work out well, right? So those types of AI, what they can do, they can learn new stuff independently and they can apply knowledge from one domain to another domain based on the world knowledge they have. And this is really human-like. And the reason why you should ask this question, so if a speaker talks about narrow AI, the talk might be much more based on concrete scientific, statistical, mathematical solutions and methods. Whereas if, if she talks about something superior like general AI or super AI, the talk might be much more on a visionary or philosophical level. If the speaker actually talks about narrow AI, the next question is, is she talking about machine learning or other AI methods? So if it's machine learning, the good thing is you can apply all the fundamentals you have learned already. You know the pros and you know the cons. Whereas if it's an other method, you first have to find out about this method. You have to understand how it works in order to be able to understand the talk. So this is also very important because machine learning is one subset of AI, a very famous one at the beginning, at the moment, but it's not the only one. And the last question is, if she talks about machine learning, is the funnel from data to decision observable? So in a high quality talk, the speaker will always make transparent on which data the algorithm was trained on and which method was applied, right? And only with this information, you can really scope the solution the speaker talks about, and you can really think about how well it can perform in which kind of situation. Whereas if AI is represented as black box, you might always have problems to fully understand the solution. So artificial intelligence is important because it will impact our private lives and it will change the way how we work. So learning about AI is key for everybody. And if you decide to do so by watching all those great TEDx talks, and if you apply the fundamental knowledge of my talk, plus the three guiding questions, you will definitely understand much more about AI than this. Thank you. <laughs>